Welcome! In this exciting video, we'll go over 5 techniques that if practiced, will immediately produce a boost in your self-esteem, guides you in a new path of believing in yourself more, gaining confidence, and radiating light and energy wherever you go. When we think of self-confidence, we usually picture someone with great posture, with authority when they speak, someone who doesn't seem to be afraid of anything, who walks tall and determined. But are they just born like that? Can we learn to be more confident? And how? Well, key number one is to define your identity. Who you are in your own mind, in your own perception, plays a huge role in how you feel about yourself and how the world perceives you, how you treat others and how you even speak to yourself. Sometimes we have the wrong concept of identity for ourselves. We may say we're not good enough, we're ugly, we're shy, we're just not good at talking with people. And those types of traits and characteristics and language that we use after repetition, they start becoming true in our own minds. But we know they are not true because every individual has unlimited potential and there is just so much goodness inside of us. The human is capable of anything. So if we are able to sit down and just define our identity in a more powerful way, we gain so much strength. So tell me, what are some of your biggest strengths? Do you have a good sense of humor? Do you like to laugh, to dance? Are you a good listener? Are you a compassionate person? Are you smart? What are some things that you're good at? Do you play any sports? Are you good with technology? Reading, writing, drawing? What do people appreciate about you? Do they like to talk to you, to listen to you? Do they like to spend time with you? Define an identity for yourself. And you can even use characteristics that you don't believe you possess yet. Yes, be creative. Select some traits and qualities from someone that you admire. How would you like to be? Write down on a piece of paper. What is your identity? Who are you? How do you define yourself? So another thing you can do on the same technique of identity is to practice actions that in the past maybe you would feel uncomfortable doing. Maybe you say you are shy and you can't approach a stranger to say hello. Challenge yourself. Do the uncomfortable thing and practice a few times. See how it feels. What's the worst that can happen? Maybe it doesn't go well. Maybe you tell a joke and nobody laughs. Doesn't matter, laugh at yourself. And make sure to remember, great job for trying something different. The key number two is to focus on how we move our bodies. Our bodies are not just these things that carry us around. They are alive. They have energy. Every cell is working constantly, feeding blood to every organ. The circulation is happening. The nervous system is working. Our muscles are working. Our bodies are very much alive and they need stimulation. So how we move, how we sit, how we walk, our posture, the movements we make with our face is where we live. Ask yourself, where do you live? Do you live in a state of depression, sadness, always down, slow movements, a lot of sitting down, a lot of lying down, 
a lot of them tired? Or do you live in a state of energy? Do you wake up at a certain time? Do you go exercise? Do you walk after? Do you dance? Do you smile a lot? Are you alive? Are you an energized person? If not, it's okay. There's a lot that we can do and we can start small. If you're very sedentary, start by taking a 20 minute walk every day. Everybody can take a 20 minute walk every day. As you move forward, increase it a little bit. 30 minutes, then you start going to the gym. Maybe put some videos on your, in your house and start dancing. Move your body. Immediately, when you are sad or depressed or full of fear, you're sitting down watching the news and something comes in. Immediately, if you get up and you start jumping up and down or dancing like nobody's watching, I guarantee you that state of physiology is going to change how you feel. And how you feel is going to affect what you do. And what you do is going to affect who you become. Key number three, watch what you focus on. Watch what you pay attention to. Where focus goes, energy flows. What are you paying attention to? Think about your day as like a chart, a pie chart. And in that pie chart, how much time do you spend working on yourself, working on your fitness, uh, working on your spirituality, working on your business, spending time with friends, family? How much time do you spend watching TV, playing games? How much time do you spend walking? How, do you, how much time do you spend interacting with others? How much time do you spend doing something challenging that you've never done before? Learning. So that chart is going to give you a good idea of where your attention is going. When we have our attention going towards things that are positive and will help us grow and will help us learn, we are dedicated to our craft, we're learning, we're reading books, we're listening to speakers, we are growing. That's precious time. When we're just sitting sedentary and playing games and watching TV and being mindless, mindless eating, mindless watching TV, we're wasting precious time. So what we focus on is very important. We have to focus on things on purpose. Sometimes we even allow ourselves to focus too much on what other people think, say, or do. We focus on what do they think of us, driven by fear of rejection, of not being good enough. We focus on what, what are they doing, how can we please them and make them happy. Really, we can't make anybody else happy or we can't change anybody else. So it would be a waste of our time to focus too much on other people. It's better to pretend that you're in a hula hoop and just focus on what is inside your hula hoop. If somebody's doing something over there or over here, your neighbor is saying something, doing something else, don't worry about it. People don't usually think of us as much as we think they do. And honestly, nothing people do is because of us. Even when people do something directly to us or call us a name or say something rude, they're just doing that because of whatever's going on in their lives and what they learned. So don't let it affect you. Focus on yourself. Focus on growing, on becoming better, on helping others. Focus on things that are going to make you a better person. Because by becoming a better person, you're going to create a stronger identity. By having a stronger identity, you're going to feel more certain about yourself, about your own reason for being here, your own purpose. And that's key number four. Get a purpose in life. We all have a purpose. We're not a mistake. Even if your parents didn't want to have children, even if you were adopted, even if you don't know what happened in your childhood, you are not a mistake. 
You were created, especially. Isaiah says that God called us by our names, that we are His. And before we were born, He already counted every single hair in our head. How could I ever think I'm a mistake? If God created me, He had a purpose. He had a reason. Think about your reason. Think about your purpose. Maybe put it in prayer. Ask him to help you, to clarify, to guide you, to shed some light. Because when we have a purpose, our identity is firmed. We can focus on that purpose. And by doing that, build character. We are not going to be dependent on other people's opinions or acceptance or rejection. Because our purpose is going to hold us strong. Key number five is what is the meaning, the meaning that we give to situations, to people, to circumstances. The meaning that we give is so powerful. Think about two people. Maybe you watched a movie or saw a story where two people experienced the same exact thing. Maybe they lost their parents very young. There was a tragedy and two people under the same circumstances can have two different reactions. One can give the meaning that life is over, I'm a victim, why did this happen to me, why? I don't like God anymore, I don't believe in Him because why would He let this happen? And this person can grow up to be depressed, to be cynic, to be sad, alone. The other person, under the same circumstance, maybe gave it a meaning that, wow, there is a lot of tragedy in the world. This happened to my family, but there's a lot that happens to many people. I must find the strength to help other people that go through tragedies like this. I must be a voice so they understand this is not the end. It's the beginning. This is a tragedy that I will ask God to help me to use to help others. And that person grows to have an identity, purpose, self-confidence, and high self-esteem. Because people who help other people, people who commit esteemable acts, have strong self-esteem. So the meaning we give, even when somebody is mean to us, we say, wow, why don't they like us? What did I do wrong? But sometimes the meaning is as simple as, I don't know what's going on with that person. Let me just walk away because I don't want that negativity to catch on me. Dust yourself off and walk away. The meaning we give is very important. Think about these things. They can change your life. So, in reflection, we talked about our identity, how we move our body, our physiology, what is our purpose, and the meaning that we give to things, people, and situations, right? Those are just a few keys to boost your self-confidence. And if you really start paying attention on these things today, just by focus and changing the meaning instead of waking up and turning on the news wake up and turn a powerful motivational video instead of going to sleep watching the news or something silly some mindless show do a meditation before you sleep get yourself in a prayer state get yourself connected with the spirit of the universe do things that will help you have personal development overcome any low self-esteem that you may have and be healthier because when you're healthier everybody around you is going to be healthier too self-confidence identity purpose they're all contagious i wish for you to find your purpose your identity as soon as possible i will be praying for you and i wish for you to be on this journey where you no longer doubt yourself and every day you determine yourself to grow more and more. Today, you only have one competition. 
to be the best version of yourself and to be better than you were yesterday. That's it. Nobody else. Nobody else is like you. Nobody else is in this competition because you were created uniquely for your purpose. God bless you.